Hi everybody. Welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, neurologist from Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. Today we are going to talk about a very very interesting and exciting topic the spinal cord lesions and the spectacular concepts. The spinal lesions and the spectacular concepts. We are going to talk about the brown sequat syndrome which is the hemisection of the spinal cord. Frederick's ataxia or spinocerebellar degeneration. Syringomyelia which causes the characteristic dissociated sensory loss. Subacute combined degeneration which is because of vitamin B12 deficiency. Spinal muscular atrophy seen in infancy. It's an anterior motor anterior horn cell disease. Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis a motor neuron disease. Anterior spinal artery syndrome which affects all the tracts except the posterior column. Tabis dorsalis the third stage of tertiary syphilis. Poliomyelitis a viral infection of the anterior horn cell and finally the conus cauda lesions. So we are going to talk about the spinal lesions and spectacular concepts. To begin with the brown sequat syndrome. Brown sequat syndrome is the hemisection of the spinal cord and therefore there is an ipsilateral loss of all sensation at the level of the lesion. Since the radicals and the dorsal root ganglia gets affected there is an ipsilateral loss of all sensations at the level of the lesion. There is an ipsilateral element signs flaccid paralysis at the level of the lesion because the anterior horn cell is cut. There is ipsilateral UMN signs below the level of the lesion because of the corticospinal tract involvement. And there is an ipsilateral loss of proprioception that is the joint position vibration sense and light sensation because of the dorsal column involvement. But then, but then very interesting and characteristic loss is the contralateral, not ipsilateral, contralateral loss of pain, temperature and crude touch sensation below the level of the lesion. So contralateral loss of pain and temperature sensations because of spinothalamic tract involvement. The spinothalamic tract ascends and crosses over to the opposite side and then ascends. And therefore when there is a hemisection of the spinal cord, all the tracts and their manifestations are on the same side except spinothalamic tract since it crosses over there is loss of pain and temperature sensation on the contralateral side, a very important point. So this is brown sac cord syndrome, a hemisection of the spinal cord. Next we will talk about the Frederick's ataxia. Frederick's ataxia is usually seen in the in children. It is a spinocerebellar degeneration. It is basically an autosomal recessive trinucleotide repeat disorder on chromosome 9 gene that encodes frataxin iron binding protein that leads to mitochondrial dysfunction. So it's an autosomal recessive disorder and trinucleotide repeat disorder because of dysfunction of frataxin the iron binding protein which leads to mitochondrial dysfunction. So there's a degeneration of corticospinal tract which causes spastic paraparesis there is a degeneration of spinocerebellar tract which causes ataxia. There is involvement of the posterior column and therefore joint position vibration sense are lost and dorsal root ganglia is involved and therefore there is a loss of deep tendon reflexes. The clinical manifestations are since the spinocerebellar tract is involved, they will have the frequent falling, they will have the staggering gait, they will have nystagmus dysarthria and any long standing degenerative disease uh, peripheral neuropathy what happens is that it causes an unequal muscle weakness of the spinal column or the foot muscles so they'll have kyphoscoliosis because of the unequal weakness of the paravertebral muscles or pescavus because of the unequal weakness of the foot muscles so frederick's attacks is a long standing disease and therefore because of the unequal weakness of the muscles
there will be pest cavers, there will be hammer toes, diaptus manitus, kyphoscoliosis because of the unequal weakening of the paravertebral muscles, there is a spinal curvature and finally they will have hypertrophic cardiomyopathy which is the cause of death. So Frederick's ataxia is, an, is a disorder because of autosomal recessive inheritance usually seen in children. Next a very interesting disease what we see is syringomyelia which causes the characteristic dissociated sensory loss. Dissociation means going away, association means coming together. Dissociated sensory loss, the pain and temperature are lost but touch position vibration sense are preserved. Very interesting. The spinothalamic tract is affected so pain and temperature are lost but posterior column is spared so position joint vibration sense are spared. They give a very interesting history. If, by, if accidentally they keep their hand in the fire, they don't appreciate the, the pain. But someone touches them, they appreciate the pain. Very interesting. Unknowingly, even if they keep their hand in the fire, they don't appreciate the pain. But someone touches them, they appreciate the touch sensation. This is known as dissociated sensory loss. Loss of pain temperature, but presence of touch. Syringomyelia. This is because of syrinx. A syrinx expands and damages the anterior white commissure of the spinothalamic tract, the second degree spinothalamic tract. So there is a bilateral symmetrical loss of pain and temperature sensation in the cape-like distribution because of the spinothalamic tract involvement usually seen in the cervical region. That's why there is a cape-like distribution. It may be associated, since it could be a congenital malformation, so it may be associated with GRE1 malformation. The next very interesting topic what we are going to see is subacute combined degeneration, which is because of vitamin B12 deficiency. Vitamin B12 is essential for myelination and therefore when the vitamin B12 is absent, the myelinated tracts get affected, that is the posterior column gets affected, the pyramidal tract gets affected. The spinocerebellar tract gets affected and the peripheral nerves gets affected. The tract which does not get affected in the subacute combined degeneration is the spinothalamic tract because it is the least myelinated tract. So except spinothalamic tract, all the tracts which are myelinated gets affected. So there is a demyelination of the spinocerebellar tract which results in ataxic gait. There is a demyelination of corticospinal tract which results in upper motor neuron signs. There is a demyelination of the dorsal column of the posterior column giving rise to impaired position vibration sense. There is a demyelination of peripheral nerves, especially the large fibers which gives rise to paresthesias. So very important in subacute combined degeneration of the spinal cord is a sparing of spinothalamic tract because it is least myelinated and therefore it does not get affected because of vitamin B12 deficiency. The next important topic which we see is the spinal muscular atrophy which is the degeneration of the anterior tonsils, SMA type 1 which is otherwise known as burdening Hoffman type. So usually seen in children, it is because of the congenital degeneration of the anterior tonsils. So they, it will be a floppy baby, floppy baby because of the element signs, degeneration of the anterior tonsils, it is known as burdening Hoffman type 1. If we see in, what we see in adults is a type of motor neuron disease where there is both involvement of upper motor neurons as well as the lower motor neurons that is the anterior tonsils. The corticospinal tract is affected as well as, the, as well as the anterior tonsils are affected. Motor neuron disease is a disease which has got predilection only for the motor tracts. It does not affect the sensory system. So it affects all the components of the motor system, upper motor neuron and the lower motor neuron, the combination of which we call it as ALS, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. So it affects the corticospinal tract the upper motor neuron and anterior tonsils the lower motor neuron signs. The next important category which we see is the anterior spinal artery syndrome. The anterior spinal artery supplies almost all the tracts of the spinal cord except the posterior column which is supplied with the posterior spinal artery. Therefore when there is involvement of the anterior spinal artery it produces the characteristic anterior spinal artery syndrome wherein the cortic wherein the corticospinal tracts and the spinothalamic tract get affected but posterior columns are spared because posterior columns are, are supplied by the posterior spinal artery. Tabes dorsal is the third stage of syphilis known as tertiary syphilis. What happens in the tabes dorsalis? There is a degeneration of the dorsal columns, posterior columns. 
So there's progressive sensory ataxia and rhombic side. There is also the degeneration of the roots. So they will have the absent deep tendon reflexes. They may be associated with Charcot's joints because of the loss of the sensations and they may have the characteristic ARP, Argyll Robertson pupil, wherein there is an accommodation reflex is present but light reflex is absent because of their lesion being in the pretectal nucleus wherein the accommodation reflex is spared. Another important spinal lesion what we encounter is the poliomyelitis which is the polioviral infection of the anterior horn cells. So there are signs of infection like headache, fever, malaise, diffuse body aches, there are anterior horn cell signs, element signs and finally they will develop respiratory muscle weakness leading on to respiratory failure. And finally we have the conus cauda lesions. Conus is the lesion involving the tip of the spinal cord. So S2 and below get affected. So they'll have bladder involvement, they'll have bowel involvement, they'll have sexual disturbances. Sometimes if S1 is involved, we call that as an epiconus. Corda equina are the involvement of the roots, usually because of the disc prolapse or the tumor, where the involvement of the roots is below L2. So below S2 is conus, below L2 is corda equina. So these are all the spinal cord lesions which we encounter and they have wonderful concepts and explanations. So these are the spinal lesions and spectacular concepts. I hope you have enjoyed listening to my lecture. If you have any suggestions or comments, kindly post on to my YouTube channel. But please like and subscribe my YouTube channel, Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my webpage, Dr. Srinivas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.